Welcome back to another reading and collecting of the news child by me, Kendar, the Tiger Wife, and Ty, the Tiger Supervisor. Today we are doing chapter 15. Tristan pushed himself. He ran hard to burn off his sense that had to burn off the sense that had crept over him during the last month. It wasn't Alex. He had that under control. It was the utter lack of things to do. He couldn't understand how it was that, with all the people in the universe, this could happen. But there hadn't been any new weapons, ship security system, or anything even remotely, remotely related to his survival to be developed. It wasn't the first time such thing has happened. Such thing had. It wasn't the first time such a thing happened. Wow, is my clunky writing? Such a thing. It wasn't the first time such a thing had happened. The last one had resulted in him fall, falling for a trap and, and ended up ending up in prison. The one before that, he'd ended up in the middle of a local war on the low-tech world. These times when he had nothing to do never led to anything good. He'd even caught himself looking over mercenary boards, just to see what kind of easy jobs were floating around these days. He stopped as he noticed something white down the hill leading to his house. This was the last section of his trail, the longer one. It went down a long hill, then the forest ended. Alex stopped next to him, jogging in place to stay warm. The temperature wasn't cool enough to see this, your, to see your breath, see his breath, to see his breath. But <clears throat> the human was a, didn't have any fur. The human didn't have fur. Maybe you could force him to keep running naked when the cold began? No. There was no way he could convince the medic that it hadn't been Alex's idea. It had been Alex's idea. Focus on the section of what he could see. Did anyone have something that stark of a white? No. Nothing stayed that pristine unless a lot of care was taken to keep it clean. And the people here had more important things to do than clean machinery. Stepped to the side and saw more of it. Got a sense of a ship. The, the sen I got a sense of size. A ship, a smaller one, maybe just a shuttle. What he saw could fit a dozen designs. Alex shrugged, mistaking the glance for a question. This would be a reasonable test of Alex's ability to follow instruction, verbal or otherwise. Tristan cut through the woods. Alex followed him, loud in spite of his effort to be silent. Still, the effort was enough no one in the, sh in, in the ship could hear them. He saw more of it through the trees, and he dismissed the design he knew one by one. This was a custom job, which meant money. He paused when he saw two men standing on each side of the open hatch. Human. Broad-shouldered, tall, wearing expensive black suits. The cloth looked ordinary, but it would be armored. What grade of armor would depend on how much money their employer spent. Guards came from two groups, military or law. If they were military, the bulge under their jacket would be Kendrick's, a B-43 B or C-56, their preferred guns. If they came from the law, it was looking like one of the heavier model of the of Azeru or one of the weaker Dirons. They stood relaxed but attentive. <clears throat> the ship had landed on the, with the hatch facing the end of the path. The owner had scanned the area and placed himself where Kristen would exit Exit it right in front of them if he stayed on the trail. Time to deal with them. He stepped on branches on the ground and made sure to break those at body height. When he stepped out of the forest, the two men had already shifted position to face him and had moved their jacket for an easy for an easier reach. The butt of the guns were the black band that were typical of Kendrick's, but too thin too thin for either of the models it expected. Tristan put the tech, max on, the tech mask on and smiled. The only reaction from the man was to relax. They reacted more to Alex's nudity, nudity when he stepped out of the forest, a raised eyebrow, than they did to him. Typical. Alien were already strange, but did it matter how they did or didn't dress? Still, it meant their attention was divided as Tristan approached. They waited too long to open their mouth if they had something to say. <clears throat> the orders to give were an offer to make. They shouldn't have waited for him to come within arm's reach. 
He punched one, the closest one in the throat, pulled the gun out of the holster as he fell, the CF, the SO3, commonly called the perforator. The safety slid smoothly, the safety slid smoothly off in the off position and he shot the other man in the chest before he could react. The shirt took the brunt of the blast, but nothing that looked like ordinary clothing could have enough armor to it to stop the perforator. What is the meaning of the man stepping out of the door? We stopped at first and shoved the perforator in his face. He never tested the effect of this particular weapon on flesh. Maybe this would be an opportunity to run those tests. Maybe later. First, he needed to assess who they were and, more importantly, why they were here. This wasn't a kill or capture mission, but enough people. Don't like trespassers, Tristan said. The man straightened and inserted his white suit to just a start with his shield and glared at Tristan. This was a man used to being obeyed, respected. A flick of the eyes was all it needed for the people to do things for him. Tristan waited him out. I'm not a trespasser, finally said in a tone that implied Tristan had insulted him. I have been sending messages for days informing you of my arrival. I'm your new employer. Tristan didn't react. The man said that as if it was all that needed to be said. Corporate, at least executed fresh. But those people didn't usually come in person to buy your mercs. They hated getting their hands dirty. I didn't get any such message. All the IDs he had as contact points were programmed to alert him any time they were contacted. Only the people he paid to retrieve information from the corporations had he studied were supposed to contact him. Contact them, but sometimes one of them thought he was being proactive by giving them contact to someone who shouldn't have it. This, so this man had contacted him through his mercenary contact. He hadn't grown bored enough to check those yet. Then I recommend you check them more often. The tone waved Tristan's denial aside. This man didn't care what Tristan wanted. Yes, you should do the test now. Except test wasn't someone to shoot or shot people. Some hand, the hand fighting with Alex was easy to explain. They were friends. Alex would want to stay in shape. It didn't give any indication of how good Tech was. Alex was here. So it could be the explanation. He could kill these people if he thought Tech was being threatened. He considered it. But what then? Study this ship. It was a one-off. It wouldn't encounter another one like it again. Maybe more research would come in this way in the meantime. Maybe not. Why would I want to work for you? If you didn't like the answer, you could still kill this man. If you did like it, then it would be something to do. He needed something to do. May I? He indicated to the side something Tristan couldn't see. He nodded, and the man pulled a duffel bag and dropped it on the ground at Tristan's feet. Without taking his eyes off the man, Tristan pushed it behind with a foot. The bag had weight to it. Tell me what's in it. Alex whistled. There's a lot of gems, diamonds, rubies, gold, silver, all mixed together like he emptied a bunch of bags of the stuff in there. There's also a gun of some sort in two parts, a rifle by the look of it. The man smiled in pride. That's a Dolphix late that's the Dol that's Dolphix latest, the RJ twenty three. I happen to know that you're a collector. Even the military doesn't have access to it yet. I already have it. Ah, the man said. The man if the man was disappointed, he didn't show it. Well, this was primarily a demonstration of what I can, I can get you. I can get you something else if you prefer. I have contacts. If you do this work for me, not only will I pay you a second bag's worth of gem, but I will acquire any tech you want, no matter how early in its production. Kristen preferred credits when it came to payment. Anyone could print gems, but they were plenty of primitive world that still valued those, so you could get them exchanged. But the access to technology? That wasn't an offer he got often. The man spoke the truth. If he'd gotten to the RJ-23, he had contacts. If those contacts happened to be able to get him earlier design? Corporate, definitely corporate. Which meant the real question was, could he be trusted? How did you find me? My wealth is vast, as is my network of contacts. The man looked at his nails, rehearsed a rehearsed gesture. Finding someone who knew where you lived only took that in time. That was a lie. No one knew where he was. No one knew he was here. No, one person knew. He made sure any other evidence had been destroyed. Still, a lie didn't mean anything when corporate was involved. They always did. The worrisome part was that this location was compromised from any other 
The worrisome part was this was that this location was compromised from another direction, one he knew nothing about, and had to decide what to do about that. What's the job? The man smiled. Smile of someone who'd gotten what he wanted. I need someone acquired. Christian raised an eyebrow. Anyone can do that. True. But I only employ the best. Christian nodded to the man massaging his throat, glaring it fully at him. The best don't forget to active on the pot. Don't forget to activate the palm lock on his gun. The man looked at him, at them, his expression not changing, and he noticed the second one was dead. I was told they were the best. Clearly, I was misled. Get up, he told the guard. We're leaving. Pick up your garbage, Tristan ordered before the guard moved toward the shop. The guard glared at Tristan. Well, the man in white asked, what are you waiting for? Do as you're told, he scowled. Yes, someone definitely misled me. He disappeared behind the ship's wall as he moved aside from the guard and the body he carried, then reappeared. The information you need is on the chip in the side pocket, as is how to, to contact me when it's done. I haven't taken the job. The man smiled and Tristan almost shot him. He hated how smug it was. Tell me, how is the research these days? When was the last time you received some documentation, some documents on a new invention in the security industry? How about the ship? weapons. As I mentioned, I have contacts within those industries. You know as well as I do, this is a dry spell. You have gone through everything that came out for this yet. How long until you do? I expect not long. The man leaning against the hatch sighed and studied Tristan. Have you deal with the mental inactivity? Do any of your previous outings during such small have anything to do with Porton? Those were rather violent, even for you. Think of this as a way of controlling what you do until the business picks up again. Nothing showed on Tristan's face, on his body, or of his desire to kill him. He knew Tristan too well. Only one person knew him that well, and he was floating outside he was floating inside a cryotube on the side of Toga. He didn't need this man alive now that he had the information on the job. But what was the point of requiring a target if he didn't have anyone to deliver him, them to? If Tristan killed them, there was no job. Could find something. Something simple, easy to do, just like he had the previous time, and each time it had been anything the previous times, and each time it had been anything but. The hatch closed, and the ship took off so smoothly Tristan's fur wasn't must. Must? 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 He'd made this decision. Now he needed to confirm something. Turn and point in the perforator at Alex's head. Who did you tell? Alex stood. He didn't flinch. There was no fear in his eyes. No one. Part of the lack of fear was an acceptance and control what Christian would do. The rest was knowing he was being truthful. He might have gotten it from the same place I did, a lawman on Bromolian 6. He had a list of possibilities. I went through it, and the last one was this place. Christian considered this. He'd taken care of that list and planned to, unre planned to remove that man when he had the time. But while anything the man had compiled had been destroyed, he could account for what he had done with the knowledge. He lowered the gun, grabbed the bag, and headed to his work. Alex followed him as far as the door, then waited for instructions. When Tristan didn't say anything, he walked off. The door closed. Tristan played the message, waiting on his computer. Jack Jacoby. Small ship just broke Atmo. The boy you calculate it's, direct, it's, <clears throat> it's heading to your place. If you need help, call me. A call came in as he erased, as he erased, as he erased, as he erased. I had a bad habit of, uh, participle past, overcomplicating. A call came in as he erased it. Deck, the portmaster sounded worried. Are you okay? I'm fine, Tristan answered. Are you sure? They left scanner range. Who was that? The tag didn't give me any result. Definitely awkward. No one you need to worry about. Pause. Deck, I'm here if you're in trouble. You know that. Christian had to stop himself from snapping. Deck would understand the portmaster's concern. It was just someone offering me work. Uh, it was just someone offering me work. I need to go. With this guy. The portmaster wouldn't call again, but he would have questions. The portmaster wouldn't call again, but he would have questioned one thing. 
would ow wow oh when tech informed him he had to leave yeah yeah this you know this is an old book my writing was funky he left the workroom to the smell of grilled meats and vegetables he thought the job over as he ate it was simple enough like many jobs they were variable it could complicated, but he'd accounted for as many of them as he could. What was left shouldn't be too problematic. He stood. Pack your things. We're taking the job. We? Oui? Alex looked from, looked from his plate. I'm going with you. Kristen leveled his gaze on the human. I am not leaving you here unsupervised. I wouldn't touch anything. Five months. Five months, at the most. That was how long he gave Alex before security would override his common sense and he tried to enter his workroom. That would certainly resolve his problem. I swear, Alex said, I wouldn't. But the explosion would destroy his things. You're a human. You can't help touching things you shouldn't. We leave in an hour. He went back to the workroom and put his things away. The security system was already programmed to activate once he and Alex were out of range. Anything he'd need for the job was already on his ship, or he'd get it locally. He sent a message to the portmaster about his departure, and shut down the terminal before a reply could be could be sent back. Could be power off. Could, could like it arrive. The only thing he brought with him was a bag with the half of his payment, minus the JR23, the G, the RJ23. He stirred that with, his other, with the other one. Alex was waiting for him with his bag over his shoulder, but without the case. So Alex expected to come back. It was better that way. The human wouldn't be suspicious of what Tristan had in mind for him. As expected, the portmaster was waiting for them. He didn't, leave, he didn't have to be there. His office in the town controlled everything. But he liked to be hands-on, the way the human gritted his teeth, and and his arms crossed over his chest, indicated that this wasn't about the personal touch. You said everything was okay, the man said. It is. Bullshit. They show up, and not four hours later, you take off? Tell me this isn't related. Who was that? You said it was about a job. Is it? What was... Was that your boss? No. Then who? Portmaster glared at Tristan, not getting out of his way. Are you going to tell me it's something... Are you going to tell me it's some competitor trying to steal you away? Something like that. Made good, made as good an explanation as anything else. Did you take it? Tristan didn't confront. The man's face softened. Are you leaving? Was that someone who shouldn't know you live here? Took a breath. Tech, talk to me, please. I may have to leave. Tristan conceded after thinking it over. If I can't, if I can't resolve this, it's possible more people will find me if I remain here. We'd help you. We'd help. You know that. We look after the, our own here. You couldn't help. The man's face hardened. But before he said what he really wanted to say, he closed his eyes and took control of himself. What? I hope you fixed this then. We miss you when you're away. Just don't look back the way you come. I do too. He replied trustfully, having this place to come back to between jobs where he knew no one would bother him had been good. He would miss having that if he couldn't return. The portmaster got out of his way and walked alongside, along, walked alongside to the hangar. He opened it and Tristan headed inside to unlock his ship. Is there any chance I can convince you not to make this permanent? The portmaster asked in a low voice, probably thinking Tristan wouldn't hear. Convince him we can help him with this? He does what he wants, Alex answered, his voice first fully casual. What is this, Alex? You were here. What? What happened? It's what he said. Alex snapped. Damn it! The portmaster stopped, and Tristan heard the exasperation. You think I don't know this research crap is hiding something else? No one comes to a place like this because they like the soil. We're all hiding something. Doesn't he get that? You're wrong. He's just a tech who needs privacy for his work. Fuck. Fine. Play that game too. But I'm asking you, as one man who's been in the life to another, look after him. I know you care about him, but try to remember you're not the only one. You're, you're not the only family he has. 
I can make you understand that. Let go of me, Alex growled. Tristan turned to stop whatever was about to happen. The portmaster took a step back, hands in the air, like getting out. Alex's hand was under his jacket, where one of his knives was sheathed. He was angry, bordering on rage. Tristan wondered which of the portmasters were in process. Alex regained control of himself and turned, heading inside the hangar. Tristan lowered the ramp and entered it before Alex. The ship had been the Jiroki cargo hold in the previous incarnation, which he'd acquired as part of his last job. He'd refitted it to better suit his need and brought it here, leaving his previous ship hidden. The ship was small, designed for two people, but with only one bed. Alex could use but he, but that if he felt so inclined. He indicated the communication and scanner station. Sit. Tristan took the pilot's seat. He took a chip and handed it to Alex. Familiarize yourself with the job, he said, as he set about taking them off planet. This concludes chapter 15 of The Used Child. If you are enjoying this, please leave a like. If you want to know when the next one is going to be up, subscribe and hit the bell. If you want to read the book as well as the others in this series, they are available on all major e-retail. If you want to support me and get access to basically everything I've written, you can do that on Patreon. If you want to listen to me do these live, stumble my way through all of this, it's on Twitch every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. The links are in the notes. And with that, I shall wish you a good day.